Welcome, welcome to the Yellow Kuz channel. This is going to be class number 12 in the discourse, Bishash Dimu 5672. Um, this, this is in the first discourse uh, of the Ayan Bay series. All the classes in this mimer were dedicated for the schus of Rafu Shalema, for Avram ben Parvin. May he have a complete recovery amongst all the ill of the Jewish people and only blessings to the family. We were holding before Yom Tif. Now it's after Shavuos, so it's a whole new energy in the Torah. So let's see how this all comes out. Um, we are holding in the towards the end of chapter two of the discourse, Perek Beis, uh, but not the end. We're kind of uh, about two thirds in. We were learning how the uniqueness of an erpnimi of an internal light, how the, the the internal light means it has a vessel, and the ve- and the light and the vessel are compatible with each other. Although we're going to see soon, the lights are much higher than the vessels. Yet the light is meant, the energy, the force is meant to um, descend and to and to uh, fill the vessel, and as a result of that, be in- integrated into the vessel where the two of them have, and, and then eventually unify. That's the point. The two become unified, and as a result of that, each one has influence on the other. Just a funny story. The other day, I was thinking about this because the other day before Shavuos. We had a big program over here, and um, and it involved a, a certain decor that we needed, and obviously food. So I went with my wife. We went to downtown LA to the markets, so we can buy fish, and we can buy flowers at discounted wholesale uh, prices. So I went to the fish mar- market that I just recently discovered, and we went to the flower market. And it was one shopping trip early morning. And on the way back, I was amusing about the fact that we have fish in the car and we have flowers in the car and that the flowers are going to smell like the fish and the fish are going to smell like the flowers. But that's exactly the point that we're talking about over here is that when the when the powers of the soul um, go down into the body, into the physical vessels, because that's what we're using as our example. We're using the physical experience, our power, our our spiritual powers of our soul, but go down into the physical limbs. They affect each other, each one on the onto the other. Um, we learned earlier that the powers become physicalized. The powers of the soul, the intelligence, the vision, the hearing. When the soul is in heaven, it's purely spiritual. But when it goes into a body, the intelligence becomes a physical intelligence and so on and so forth. So you see how the body has impact on the soul. But now we're also learning that what happens is the powers of the soul are able to reveal themselves because the ves- because the, the limbs of the body are conditioned and created to be a perfect match. The chemistry of the limbs is meant to be perfectly set to receive that particular power. As we discussed, if you take a look at the material of the eye, is different than the material of the brain. Each one is meant to be a perfect vessel to receive and integrate the powers of the neshama, the powers of the soul. And it is for that reason that the powers of the soul are could reveal themselves completely in the vessel. So yes, the vessel has effect on it. The vessel brings the power down in the fact that it makes the power be in accordance to the world of the vessel. In our case, it becomes physical intent, um, um, intelligence. It becomes physical vision. But also, on the other hand, the, ves- the vessels are completely surrendered to the power. And they allow, therefore, the power to really, really fully reveal it into the vessel and because of that the 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 um the power the energy uplifts the vessel influence refines the vessel has an impact and that's what we were learning the last point we started to learn how through the revelation of the kayak into the vessel it lifts up the vessels to make the vessels more refined and and the way it does it is not by overpowering it, by dominating it, and by forcing the vessels to comply, but rather by by elevating it. How does it elevate it? Because this, this more refined energy is revealed in it, it refines the vessel. In other words, the vessel becomes, um, 
um, willfully, so to speak, it 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 it, it, it without resistance accepts the elevation of the power and allows itself to be uplifted. And then we'll understand this now uh, in the words of the Rebbe. Let's take a look. In the words of the Rebbe Rashab. Um the Hainu, yeah. Avil behislapshus a nefesh beguf, but when the nefesh, when the soul becomes enclosed in the body, beguf evarim in the in the in the in the beguf evarim in the the body of the limbs, harehu bepchenas keli. The the these limbs of a human body are a keli; they're a vessel for the soul. Remember, we learned unlike when a soul gets punished a human soul and it's sent into the body of an animal over there it does not find the right vessels and as a result of that the soul remains unexpressed in those limbs of the animal and that's why it's very painful for the soul because the soul cannot uplift and turn this the these that these uh these instruments or these organs into a human experience. It will remain an animal experience. But in a human body, it's meant to be to be compatible with each other. And the kochos reveal themselves into the into the limbs. And that's why they are Moshel. They dominate, they, they rule over Vishotim and have dominion, Aleyam Lanhigam to conduct them. But as he's going to explain, not in a way of dominion, which means it forces it. But in a way of 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 almost like it convinces it, it wins it over. It wins it over because it is so revealed inside. It's like the two ways you can influence someone. One is by forcing, by compelling them, like a boss compels their their workers do as I say, like a master to his to his uh, to his to his servants. But then there is another way where a teacher to the students. By the teachers revealing a higher understanding on life, a more refined uh, understanding of of life to the student, the students' um, 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 behavior um, over time naturally changes. It's not I don't have to tell you not to do so and so. When I will teach you and give you a higher appreciation for what you're living for, so you become a more spiritual person. So automatically. You're going to become. You're going to be. You're going to be less animalistic, and more refined and more elevated. That's the idea that he's explaining. So that's what I was saying about the fish and the flowers, is that there is a crossover. The, yes, indeed, the 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 body pulls the soul down to become more physical, but the soul lifts the body up to become more spiritual and more refined. So it's a give and take because of the, the symbiosis that happens over here is because they're so close to each other. And that's all because it's orpnimi. Orpnimi mean that light and vessel are compatible and meant to match up. They're a shidduch made in heaven. They're a, they're a match made in heaven. They're meant to merge together. And it's for this reason that this shlita, that this dominion of the kochos of the powers on the limbs, is not in the manner of forcing, compelling. That the powers force their way onto the limbs. How does it affect it? It's through the koach, through the power, revealing itself in the limb. So automatically, it's like filling helium into a balloon. It lifts the balloon up because of the helium is an elevated entity. It elevates the material of the balloon. So the balloon material generally is like uh, any other physical item that will go down. It, it gravitates to the earth. It, it, gravity pulls it down. Helium, that that um, 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 th- um, gas of helium is one that flies, soars upward. So although the balloon is not made up of helium, but since the helium went into the balloon, it uplifts the balloon as well. So when the spiritual soul goes into the body, it lifts the body up, takes the body out from its coarseness and makes the body more refined. And this is going to be understood both in the general state of a soul being in a body, both on a human level, he's going to explain it on a human level, regarding a human being at all, not Jewish necessarily. He's going to also explain it on a godlier level, which means the Jewish experience, our godly soul revealing itself and making our life more godly. So number one, 
There is the idea of becoming first a mensch, which means that even if it, this relates to a non-Jew as well, in which the intelligence is able to uplift the emotions and make them more refined. But then there is a, a higher level where the godly soul reveals itself in the animal soul and by, by, by opening itself up and revealing itself inside of it, so the animal soul becomes less animalistic and more godly um, oriented. And he's also, but first he explains it before he gets to the general human being, he explains it even in the more detailed elements of the person, which means more in the specific kohos. For example, we spoke earlier how the intelligence can lower itself down and and into the realm of motor, the motor element of the human being, the, the power of tenua, the power of movement that's in the hands and the feet, which generally would be more clumsy and more coarse. But when the koach has, uh, uh, the kochos of, of, of intelligence, the koach has seichel, remember we learned earlier, array of it. Yes, it's only array of it, but it flows into the koach ha It intellectualizes the motor, the, the, the motor of the person. Now it becomes intelligent movement. Like we said, an artist and a, and a dancer and the like. So in this effect, it's not like the intelligence is forcing the motor, the, the motorization of the person to behave in accordance to the in accordance to the intelligence. It doesn't force it, it's not compelling it. Because the intelligence is able to open itself up into the koachat, not in the limbs, but in the koachatnua, in the power of movement. It, 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 there is a concept of islapshus akochos. The higher koach is able to reveal itself and make itself be felt in the lower in the lower space in the power of movement. So once it's there, it, it uplifts it to the level of intelligence. So the movement becomes intelligent movement. That's the idea. When one koach encloses itself in the other koach, like the power of the intelligence, when it encloses itself, in the power of movement, and it conducts it in the work of art, and the like. This is not in a manner of compulsion, but rather it affects it. The, the movements of the of the physical movements of the hands and the feet become naturally in accordance to what the mind dictates, what the mind, how the mind would like it to be. So it's able to control the movements of the hands to be to be more refined and more more. I I I, I sometimes you know, I, I I think about this. I'm naturally, I'm very, I have, uh, so, you know, sometimes you have a self-awareness that means re regarding a certain experience. So I'm very, I have good rhythm, musical in the sense that I have good rhythm. And I was always like, when I was a little kid, I was always the drummer, like in my class and so forth. And I have the, like the, the, my hands are like automatically, you know, like people have rhythm. You can, it's not like I'm consciously um, deciding of and of how to move my how to drum like the real the real real but 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 pretty 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 advanced drumming I can do with my hands, and sometimes I'm I'm, I'm noticing that as I'm you know getting a little bit uh, moving on in my life, um, sometimes I feel like that 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 control that the mind had over the power of the hands and feet to control, sometimes I feel it's getting weaker. It bothers me. <laughs> Because I, I I I like feels like my hands are not are they're missing the beats they're not as as fast and as rhythmic like they used to, and I feel like it's like the hand is being clumsy the feet are being clumsy it's not as light and as tuned in to the mind because I know the rhythm is taking place it's a koach music it's 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 in the head but the head extends itself into the lower limbs and makes the limb comply. Right? Not just, but it doesn't force it. The, 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 the music of the mind goes down into the hands and feet, and your hands and feet experience the music. But it's because of the, its connection. Uh, as there is a little wear and tear in the body and the whole neuro neurological experience, it's not as sharp as it was 10 years ago. It bothers me. Um, so, um, but I, that's, when, that's where I feel it. And that's what he's talking about over here. 
I think, is that the sometimes the, the point, the way it works when one koach is influencing the other koach is not by compelling it, but by revealing itself inside of it and uplifting that koach to be the kefi koach ha-seichel. But it's because of the seichel, not because of the koach itself. But it's like the helium lifting the material of the balloon to a higher place. The ein zekamoy pe'il sarotsin. It's not like the power of will. Shepoil bekol rakoychais. Now there is another power. There is a dominant. There is the power of desire and will that can rule over the body. When you want to do something, the body listens. Now we know that the power of will dominates on two things: on the limbs, the entire um, human and and physical uh, 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 operation is controlled by a person's desire. When you want to move your hand, you move your hand. You want to move your legs, you move your legs. Every part of the body moves according to the person's desire and want. But it also dominates over the powers of the soul. If you want to use your head, you will use your head. If you don't want to use your head, then you're not going to use your head. That's what we know. We say, nothing can stand in front of will. With will, you activate all your powers of your soul and you also activate the limbs, they all work in, 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 in complete compliance to the power of will. But the power of will is not a koach prati. It's not a specific power that goes into any individual limb to like um, reveal itself in the limb. The power of will remains a, an aloof power. It remains a force standing above the person, above the individual powers and organs, and directs it and dominates over it like a king dominating over, over its subjects. Not through revealing itself, not through a process of lowering itself down into that space and as a result of that lifting it up, but by a power of supremacy, a higher force dominating over it like a king. The But he says the power of Seichel on the on the lower powers, is not like the pu'ula of Ratzon. That it influences all the powers and all the limbs. This is in a manner of compulsion. Because it's the highest power of the soul. It's a high power, in essence. When that, when the power of Ratzon uh, is felt in the body, it forces his galus akochos. It drives all the limbs into compliance. Everybody stands to service the will. And that, that's the kochos, that's the powers. And so also the physical limbs. When they listen to the power of will, they become nullified. Yes, my master, whatever will wants, that becomes in the body, but not because they they appreciate it, not because it's part of them, not because it has assimilated into them, but because it overpowers them. But the internal powers of the nefesh, which is this the power of intelligence, emotions, and the like, is not like that. This that it affects. That the lower power should be should be like the what the higher power is requesting or what the higher power is calling for. Over here, it's not that way. It's in a, it's in a more internalized way. It's through it being enclosed in it and revealing itself in it, not through a power forcing it from above, but by entering into it and thereby lifting it up. It's a difference. So uh, example. It's when you're when you are picking up a, 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 a the, the rubber of the balloon. Let's use it. When a person is picking up, there's a there's a there's a there's a rubber of a balloon on the floor, and you're going to lift it up. So you're also picking it up, moving it against gravity. But here, the power that's moving it has nothing to do with the balloon. The balloon is not in any way internalizing that force. It's an outside force. It's your hand that's picking up this this rubbery material and lifting it up as well, however high you, you're taking it up. How are you going? But if you fill the rubber material with helium, then it is lifting because it is now, I mean, obviously the physics of it is not you're changing the physics of the balloon, its nature is, but you're at least filling it. You're As you're re- filling it within the inside and it is lifting up, it is lifting it from within. That, 
That's the idea. And that's where we can see, you know, as you can, as we said earlier, you can dominate your children or your servants or whatever it is to do something, but then they're doing it because a force outside of them is compelling them to do so. Or you can teach them and elevate them, which is a longer way till they, they themselves have a higher appreciation of a higher understanding. It's your direction. It's your teaching. They on their own would not have come to this understanding, but because you've lowered yourself down and explained yourself and explained your way of life. And usually it's not even like you're even telling them that you want certain results. It's because you're just, you're just, you're just, um, you're elevating the conversation. You're elevating the, 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 the state of consciousness. And when they get a higher state of consciousness, they themselves change and they're elevated. That's the idea how kochos pnimiyim work. Yeah. Um, and this is the way. So earlier we spoke about one particular power, the power of the intelligence affecting the hands, the feet, to be in a certain way. This that the moach, the brain, rules rules over the heart. This is a concept that we learn in Hasidus. This is Tanya 101, in which we learn that the mind rule, rules the heart. That means that a person can use their intelligence to influence their emotions and guide their emotions. So in general, we are told, this is the basic press. God tells us to love him. And the question is, how can you love God or how can you fear him? Um, how can you tell someone what to love? So it's explained in Hasidus, God's commandment to us is not to love. We can't command love. But what we can command is that you should you should bring a higher intelligence into your consciousness. You should study. Hashem should become something that you become very familiar with. You study it. You learn it. You explore it. You fill your mind with godly knowledge. And when you fill your mind with godly knowledge, it will trickle into the emotions. And eventually it will change the emotions to gravitate towards something higher. So this is the idea of moach shalat al alev. How does the mind rule over the heart? This is an example in religiosity, in our experience of the divine, but it's regarding everything. The heart, of, 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 of when we're very young, our heart is really stuck in silliness. Silly, silly things that, that get us excited and silly, silly things get us upset. As we mature in life, and we have an increased knowledge, the, the knowledge and the understanding of the mind influences the heart. It's not that the mind is whipping the heart. What happens is the more a person engages in intellectual study and learning, it weakens the, the intensity of the emotions. Um, and, and and this is this is in general a way of life. It's important for us to understand that sometimes we struggle with certain with certain things that our heart impulses, desires that like are very strong, and we feel like we can't change ourselves. It's like too difficult. So sometimes we feel like we want to go on it head on. We want to directly try to influence. I don't like the fact that I love doing so and so. I don't like the fact that I'm so um, I'm so um, I have such a impulsive behavior in this particular thing or in that particular thing. I can't control my diet. I can't control my uh, other 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 desires and other ones. So sometimes the best way of dealing with it is not head on trying to change it like Musser tries to do a lot of times, but rather try the method of Hasidus. What does Hasidus say? Hasidus says, stop thinking about what, you, what your desires are. They're not kosher, not holy, not godly. Take your head and immerse your head. Let's immerse our minds in a higher world. Every day, think about godliness and holiness and Hashem's truth. And as we, we think and we learn and we study, we experience a paradigm shift. Our mind, our reality starts changing. And sometimes we don't even notice the difference. And not just sometimes. You probably won't notice the difference in your heart immediately. You won't even notice that you're changing. But there is no question if a person takes and decides to learn the subject of godliness for two years, five years, ten years, you become a different person. Automatically a change. And it's not like you even forced, you didn't tell yourself to change. It just happens naturally when it, when 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 your when your when your when your intelligence 
is is in, is 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 gravitating to a more refined and elevated space. So then the entire energy of the person becomes uplifted, and the heart follows along where the head is, and that's the idea of moyach shalat because the lower part of the intelligence flows into the heart. Now, obviously, in the Hasidus, we learn that we can act expedite that process. If we meditate deeply during davening, we bring, we fulfill what it says, the adaita hayoyim, you should know, you should bring it into your heart. That expedites it. That makes what would, what otherwise would take, you know, if a person just learns Hasidus and doesn't really meditate on the concepts during davening, um, um, then you will still notice a change in your life but it will be a subtle change and it might take 10 years to become a little bit of a mensch, a little bit of a more refined being. If a person would dive in daily and deeply think about these ideas and try to like bring it from the head into the emotional realm that your emotion should feel it, then what would take 10 years, you can get it done in three months. The movement. But that is not to dismiss. Even without that, you become a changed human being if you continuously feed your mind with higher intelligence. And that's what he's talking about over here. Now, again, both levels, whether you're expediting it or whether you're not expediting it or you're letting it happen, but the the, the process of, of filling, of elevating the mind will inevitably cause an elevation in the heart sooner or later. Kamay uh, Shekasov, this that the mind rules over the heart. It's not telling the heart this is the way you have to do with things. It causes a weakness in the hearts in general. The more intelligence a person, the more intellectual you, a person becomes, the less heated the emotions are. The emotions calm down because the intelligence of, is, is calmer. And it brings a general refinement. And the reason is because the heart receives its vitality from the brain, the energy begins in the life begins in the head, and from the head it goes down into the heart. That's why the mind rules over it. What does that mean? Through the heart, who is a vessel for the mind. That's why the mind rules over the heart. Because that's how Urpnimi works. One thing is a vessel for the other. So the other one, when it is, it lifts, when it reveals itself in the lower level, it lifts it up. And that's how the powers of the soul also rule over the limbs, not by forcing themselves onto the limbs, but by revealing themselves into the limbs. Till now he's talking just the human condition. Now he's speaking spiritually as well. When the godly soul encloses itself in the animal soul, how does one influence the other? The godly soul rules and dominates over the animal soul. It doesn't mean it's not standing there and 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 calling the shots, demanding the, the animal soul to behave itself. The real deep way how the godly soul affects and does a tikkun, a rectification and a refinement into the animal soul. That the animal soul should agree to whatever the godly soul cares about. Eventually, the animal soul itself should desire godly things. stated elsewhere. So this is the way it's supposed to be. Our godly soul lives in our animal soul a lifetime. And through this experience of having more godly experiences, the animal inevitably changes. We will talk about this more in next class. Have a wonderful. And meanwhile, let Mashiach be here before the next class.